Hey there, I'm Rick Hudock, pastor at West Haven Baptist Church. This is the after party party for Sunday, December 20th, 2020. This is message number four in the Christmas Carols series, O Come, All Ye Faithful. I want to draw your attention today to a passage of scripture in Matthew, Matthew chapter 2, a familiar story, but it wasn't familiar to the characters in the story. So as I read through the story of the Magi visiting Christ, coming to worship him, as I read through that, I want to encourage you to put yourself in their shoes, put yourself in the shoes of Mary and Joseph or folks there in the village or people who were near Jesus at the time, and the surprise, the shock, the bewilderment that they must have felt, and even put yourself in the shoes of uh, the the Magi themselves, who kind of were just following the Spirit on this and didn't fully understand, but they were obedient to the revelation that they have that they had. So Matthew chapter two, beginning at verse one. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship. A band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around. Where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observe the star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified. Terrified. And not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religious scholars in the city together, and he asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judah, territory. The prophet Micah wrote it plainly. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader who will shepherd rule my people Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east, pretending to be as devout as they were. He got them to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, Go and find this child, leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word, and I'll join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they worked out another route, left the territory without being seen, and returned to their own country. Who would have thought, who would have imagined that astrologers, pagan priests, from another world, basically, Persia, hundreds of miles away, would suddenly appear outside of the house, this is after the birth of Christ, the house where Mary and Joseph and Jesus were staying. Who would have imagined that they would appear at the doorstep and that they would ask to come in and worship, bow before the baby? I mean, Jewish shepherds, okay, that's amazing. Angel visitors from Yahweh, from Jehovah, the God that they worshiped, amazing, but okay. Anna and Simeon later on in the temple, the Jewish temple, okay. But pagan priests from a far off land? This is a familiar uh, story for us, but for Mary and Joseph, Herod and other Jews at the time, it was shocking. It would be like the president or governor of a state coming to visit our baby. It was just amazing. 
and bewildering. But here's an important truth for all of us. It's the first of several truths for us in this passage. There are people who are going to come to Jesus, who are going to come to worship Jesus, who will shock us. There are people from around the world who will come to Christ. They will come from surprising places in this world who will come to Christ. There are people in our own lives, in our own community, from surprising places, whether they're physical, emotional, or spiritual places, who will come to worship Christ. We're going to be surprised at who comes to Christ, and I think we're going to also be surprised at who doesn't come to Christ someday. God has his faithful people, his faithful followers everywhere. Now, it's very likely that these Persian astrologer priests, these magi, it's very likely that Daniel, 600 or 700 years before Christ was born, when he and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and other Jewish noble people from around Jerusalem had been kidnapped by the Babylonians, and then the Babylonians, of course, fell to the Persians, and these people had been conquered by the Babylonians, Israel had been conquered, and these Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, had been taken to the capital of Babylon, and then later... Uh, became the king of Babylon and the king of Persia, became some of their most trusted advisors. They became essentially magi, interpreters of dream, wise men, people who could understand the times, except that they were filled with the Spirit of God. So it probably, either if it wasn't Daniel, it was one of his contemporaries, or those who followed, it's probably the Jewish people who became magi who told the Persians about the promised Messiah. They were looking forward to the coming of Jesus. And they passed along this information to the Persian astrologers, the Babylonian and the Persian astrologers. astrologers. And they kept that information for hundreds of years. Now they were... Astrologers, they moved in the supernatural-ish, uh, but they were also scientists of that time. And they, they understood that the stars followed certain patterns each year. Planets, they varied some, but they followed patterns as well over time. They understood that there was order to the universe. And, and so when something like a surprise star or comet or planets lining up and becoming bright together like Jupiter and Saturn did uh, in 4 BC. If, if this happened, something unusual, something out of order, something that didn't follow the normal order of the universe, then they interpreted that as a sign from God. And we don't know exactly what the Magi saw. It's important for us to remember that Jesus wasn't born exactly at 0 or 1 B.C. or 1 A.D. Uh, The Middle Middle Ages monk who uh, calculated when Christ was born missed it by a couple years. So we believe now that, uh, on our best knowledge, that Christ was born about 4 or 5 B.C. So we're not exactly sure. We're not exactly sure what that that star that they saw was. It could have been a miraculous uh, star placed there by God. It could have been a supernova caused by God. It could have been a star rising in a certain zodiac house sign that they would have interpreted. It could have been Jupiter and Saturn coming together in 4 BC. Uh, Halley's Comet passed by about 11 BC. We don't know exactly what they saw, but what I love is that God was 
approaching them with the message of Jesus Christ, and they were going to follow God's prompting, and, and God personalized his announcement for those stargazers. Angels came to shepherds. <clears throat> Mary and Joseph had angels, <clears throat> and there was, a, there was a, a, a heavenly message for the stargazers. God reaches out to us personally and individually and in ways that we can all understand. Now, how exciting this revelation must have been to them. A king was born, a, a ruler, Jewish, and that would have been strange to them, but God did touch their hearts and they set out to find Christ. And they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, we don't know that there were three magi. They're not really kings. Uh, that's really not what that word means, but they were scholars or astrologers or wise men, wise guys. Uh, we don't know how many they, there were. Could have been three, could have been 300, could have been 100, could have been 50. We don't, we don't know. But we do know that they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, gold, very symbolic, and, and the symbolism would not have been lost on these, these magi. Gold is for a king. Frankincense is something that the priest used both in pagan and in godly rituals. Pagan, um, uh, uh, frankincense was a type of incense that was often burned in the holy places of the different faiths, including Judaism. And uh, myrrh was something that was used to anoint a dead body and prepare it for burial. And so these were the gifts. And even at the cradle of Christ, they were prophesying. They may not even realize it. They were prophesying that Jesus Christ, this baby, was going to be the true king, was going to be a perfect high priest between us, between humanity and God. And in the end, he would be the savior of all humankind. And of course, they didn't come alone. It's important to realize that these magi would have had support personnel. They would have had staff with them. They would have hi had to hire local guides. And I, and I wonder what these people thought about Christ when they witnessed him, because I'm sure it wasn't just the magi who gathered. I'm sure there were others. This is another important lesson for us. When we seek Christ, there will be others who come along with us. They may follow us even when they cannot see what we see because they catch the sincerity and the thirst that we have to follow Christ. And eventually, they too will see Christ. Now, unfortunately, Herod viewed Christ as a threat, but Jesus didn't want Herod's position. That would have been a demotion because Jesus is the king of all kings. But what we see in this story is that for Herod, there was nothing more important, even the Messiah. There was nothing more important than his own power, greed, or corruption. Herod's political intrigue, his threats, the danger to the wise men and to the child show us another truth that's very important for us, that at times it can be dangerous to follow Christ, to really seek him, but finding Christ is worth it. Now what does this story reveal to us about Christ. Well, the sign in the heaven, that star, could have been, again, a miraculous star that God placed there. But I think it was a natural phenomenon in which the timing had been determined by God. Could have been supernova, could have been the planets, could have been a comet, whatever. And here's what's really exciting to me. And this gives me chills to even think about it and, and to say it to you. If this was part of the created order, this star, that means that God had to plan for this thing to take place, comet, supernova, whatever, had to take place right 
at the time of Jesus Christ. And that means that we go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, before the creation of Adam and Eve, when God was creating the universe and he created the sun and the moon and the stars, right there at that time, at that moment, before anything living, any human beings, God put into place, he wound up the universe so that at his time, in his place, there would be a star or there would be a bright object or there would be some kind of indication in the heavens. That means God set this whole plan of a Messiah in motion before the beginning of of humanity. God always, from the creation of the universe, God always intended to send the Savior to us. That is powerful. God was not surprised by the temptation and the fall of Adam and Eve. He was not surprised by sin entering into the world. He knew it was going to take place. It's part of his plan and he planned for the Messiah to come even before the creation of the first human. We also see from this story that Jesus is for everyone worldwide. God will reach out to us personally and invite us to worship. It's really amazing that these magi came all that way and actually found Jesus. That they were in some way waiting for the Messiah themselves, expecting him. And they recognized when something special was happening. But here's another amazing thing. At the time of Jesus, according to William Barclay, there was actually an expectation all over the Roman Empire of a coming king. At least two Roman historians wrote about the feeling in the world at that time that there was a special king coming. At a slightly later time, the king of Armenia visited Nero at Rome with his magi alongside him. Magi in Athens sacrificed to the memory of Plato. They began to do this. Almost at the same time that Jesus was born, Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor, was hailed as the savior of the world. And Virgil, the Roman poet, wrote his fourth eclogue, which is known as as the Messianic Eclogue. Jesus came into a waiting, expectant world. God prepared the hearts of people to receive Jesus Christ all over the world. And there at the cradle of Christ, the world gathered, the world gathered to worship him. Jesus Christ is for everyone. And I believe we live in a time when the world is waiting for the answer. You know, Christmas every year is a reminder that the Messiah has come. Every year, for some people, the Messiah comes for the first time. And what I mean by that is every year at Christmas time, there are people who suddenly realize who Jesus is, what he's done and what he offers to them. And they accept him as their Lord and their Savior. Every Christmas is a new Christmas for someone, for some ones around the world. And God has planned this from be the very beginning of time, before we were even created. God has planned to send the Messiah. He is here, and he says, come and worship the Son, Jesus Christ. Come and give your heart to him. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching. There will be a Christmas Eve uh, after party party. It won't be posted on Christmas Eve. It'll be a couple days after Christmas. West Haven Baptist Church also has a candlelight service at 6 p.m. You can tune in through YouTube or Facebook Live and watch that online. God bless you.